No deal. So what is the deal? More than 24 hours later, still no response from China after trade talks in Washington end without an agreement. But we do have an update from the President of the United States. Here's what we know right now. Massive tariffs are close to kicking in and stocks on Wall Street are still being kicked up and down. Our consumers on Main Street next. Welcome, everybody. Happy Saturday. I'm Neil Cavuto. And Fox on top of a trade war that's pretty much putting everyone on edge. We've got Edward Lawrence in Washington, where the talks went down. Ellis and Barbara at the White House on what the president is teeing up. Lawrence Simonetti at a Macy's in New York City, where shoppers may soon be paying up. And Brian Duggan in Polo, Illinois, where farmers like him are already paying a price, and a big one. We begin right now with Ellison. Hey, Ellison. Hi, Neil. Yeah, the Trump administration increasing tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. President Trump saying this morning the way to avoid those tariffs is pretty simple. He says that people should make their products in the USA. President Trump also tweeting this, quote, over the course of the past two days, the United States and China have held candid and constructive conversations on the status of the trade relationship between both countries. The relationship between President Xi and myself remains a very strong one and conversations into the future future will continue. In the meantime, the United States has imposed tariffs on China, which may or may not be removed, depending on what happens with respect to future negotiations. The administration increased tariffs on roughly $200 billion worth of Chinese imports, upping the level of tariffs from 10 percent to 25. China Commerce Min Ministry says countermeasures are coming. China's top trade negotiator, Chinese Vice Premier Liu He, suggested talks have not failed. Instead, he says this is a small setback. I don't think the negotiation has broken down. On the contrary, I think it is just a small setback in the talks between the two countries, which is inevitable. We are still cautiously optimistic for the future. The U.S. Trade Rep Ambassador Robert Lighthizer says more tariffs are coming. In addition to the tariffs increased on Friday, Lighthizer says President Trump told him to begin the process of raising tariffs on essentially all remaining imports from China, which are valued at approximately $300 billion. Lighthizer says there will be a period of time for public comment before a final decision is made when it comes to those tariffs again. From President Trump this morning, he says, in his words, it is very simple, an easy way to avoid tariffs, make or produce your goods in the good old USA. Neil. All right. Thank you very much, Ellison Barber, at the White House. We should explain here, you know, they do have a little bit of wiggle room here uh, because there is a delay uh, in the implementation of these tariffs for goods in transit here and those that have not left China yet. So two to three weeks, presumably. Regardless, though, Fox Business Network's Lauren Simonetti outside Macy's in New York City with what consumers might be having to deal with in those three weeks. Lauren. You know, this is the largest store in the nation, the largest department store. And consumers here, consumers everywhere are getting ready to spend $767 more this year. That's a number that's being put on it because of this increase uh, in the tariff. And this is being put on uh, thousands of items that you can buy in stores like Macy's. Everything from backpacks and handbags to furniture and clothing, luggage, perfume, dinnerware nuts, shampoo, all sorts of food. Now, some folks that we spoke to here, Neil, they're willing to accept this short-term pain for the long-term gain. In the long run, it's going to benefit us as U.S. consumers because someone has to be tough and actually hold the line with the Chinese. With these tariffs, I'm, it's scary. It really is. There's a lot of little people that are really going to be affected by the fact that they can't afford these things that were affordable yesterday. I think it will affect all types of different businesses, and especially I'm in retail. Overall, if it would help, I would be okay. I would probably just stop spending as much. we got to play fair, and I think that's what Donald Trump is trying to do. If I have to take a hit to improve our country in that way, then I'm happy to do it. But what happens if all of the imports to this country are hit with a tariff, as the U.S. Trade Administration's office is now preparing to do? Well, the Trade Partnership, um, that's a group that studies trade policy and its impact. They say that will cost a family of four $2,000 a year. And, Neil, that might not be so easy for Americans to bear. The other thing is this. Even if we do get a trade deal with China, that doesn't mean the tariffs come off. Back to you. That's right. Uh, there are no guarantees of, of anything right now. Thank you, Lawrence, outside Macy's in New York City. All right, 
uh, the U.S. and China is still, uh, again, nowhere close to a deal. But what is the global impact of all of this? Keep in mind, with the market's crazy volatility, $2 trillion of market wealth evaporated over the past week here. Now, that may be quickly made up. We saw the big comeback in the Dow uh, through the week. And certainly yesterday, when we were down uh, more than 358 points, to come back more than 114 when all was said and done. So let's get a read on what investors can expect in the days ahead. Uh, we've got StockSwish founder, Melissa Armo. Uh, we've also got LDM Wealth Management's Michael Lee and Fox Business Network's Jackie DeAngelis. Jackie, end it with you. You're gonna, when you talk to people and talk about the mood and all of that, um, I'm always amazed by the relative calm of investors, of average folks who seem to think this too shall pass. So we'll get over this. So there does seem to be a kind of a content that don't worry, everything will work out. Well, there's optimism in the marketplace right now, right? We ended the session on a positive note, White House saying the talks have been constructive, and investors want to believe that. The market saw a little volatility this week, though, because yeah. it had priced in a deal, and that didn't really seem to be the, the right decision to make at that point. So it was a little bit in shock this week that the president was taking this kind of hard line. But most investors that I spoke to said the retailers, they're going to be able to adjust. They already absorbed the 10%. Like you mentioned, there's that gap of three or four weeks, right. they'll be able to be a little bit more nimble. And they've moved around. They're already sourcing and trying to find new suppliers to make this work. On the other side of things, it is going to hit the consumer. But consumers do say the president is playing this long term game. And we understand that the market's driven more by the short term headlines. You know, Melissa, we're going to have uh, Walmart's former president on. And Walmart would be in the direct line of fire of this because so much of what it sells comes from China. But even there, the understanding seemed to be that they were stocking up their shelves to prepare for this, um, which might have explained, you know, the strength of the first quarter GDP report that a lot of people were prepared for this. Are they? Well, it's interesting you bring up Walmart because I was going to talk about this. Of the top four companies, Fortune 500 companies, guess what number one is? It's Walmart. And guess what two, three, four are? Chinese companies owned by the Chinese state, State Grid, Sinopac Group, and China Natural Petroleum, and they're owned by the Chinese government. So you have to remember that it's state-owned enterprises. Many of these companies over there, the Chinese government owns a portion of them. So the Chinese government is going to support some of the, co the companies over there that are having a problem, whereas over here, it's different. Obviously, companies are their own. Walmart, Targets, Amazons of the world. Well, the government is going to come in and help Walmart. Do you understand? So there is going to be a pain and suffering here if the tariffs continue. And let me tell you this. This is not over by a long shot. When they said a month ago this is going to be done, I thought, no way is this going to be done. This is going to get so much worse before it gets better. And the worse it gets, the closer we are to a deal. So when they said, oh, well, they reneged on this and that, that doesn't surprise me at all. The Chinese want to make sure they get the best deal possible. And in order to do that, they're going to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze to make sure. So what has to happen? It's two, as big, two biggest, most economies in the world, two big powers. It's like a marriage. You have two powerful people, a husband and a wife. You have to have a compromise. And the problem is that the U.S. is saying we want it to be more fair for us. But China is saying, well, yeah, but this is the way it's been for the last however many years. What do we get? So unless the Trump administration can come up with something to give as a compromise for China, I don't think a deal gets done anytime soon. So they have to be creative and well, think what then, would that then, be? Then, I don't think the markets would flip over that kind of uncertainty, Michael. I could be wrong, but I, you're uh, optimistic that cooler heads eventually prevail, right? Well, they have to. Right. Well, I know they have to, but <laughs> there's just too much at stake. And so uh, what you need to understand is the Chinese economy is essentially a house of cards. Right. So we're up in arms over a deficit that's four percent of GDP. Their deficit is 10 percent of GD GDP and their current account deficit went negative for the first time. And so they need it more than we do. You're right. Uh, exponentially more than we do. You see, um, their currency is essentially monopoly money. They've printed 30 trillion dollars of RMB mm -hmm. since 2001. So they live on dollars, euros, um, and pounds. So they need the direct foreign investment. And what these tariffs not only hurt are exports, they really, really hurt direct foreign investment. Do you want your supply chain coming out of China knowing that there's going to be the potential for 10 or 20? Well, we're already seeing some companies preparing for that. A lot of them going up to other countries in Southeast Asia, like Cambodia, Thailand, what have you, to, to compensate for what they lose out of China. But, you know, Jackie, I, I'm, I'm curious, stepping way back from this, whether there's a silver lining here in the United States. Interest rates 
have gone down the past two weeks and particularly this week. So if you're shopping for a home or trying to refinance the one you're already in, the odd thing about this crisis, whatever you want to call it, is that it's made that a lot more affordable. You're absolutely right. So as long as rates stay low and as long as the economy keeps chugging along the way it is, it's actually in a really strong point. Michael and I were talking about this in, uh, in, the, in the green room, um, that actually 3.2 percent GDP for the first quarter, that was a huge number. Absolutely. So that, that positions us well to take this hard line. Look, there hasn't really been another president that's been willing to, to, to go on the line here and put everything at stake again for for that long-term gain and to sort of put China in its place. It's something certainly that needs to be done, but there's going to be some t pain to come and that volatility Absolutely. is going to come. You know what's interesting, Melissa, too? You talk about when we've absorbed the 10% tariff that was in effect of on these 40 to $50 billion worth of goods, now it's 25% on 200 billion plus, could be 25% on everything we got from China. You can absorb 10%. You can work with your suppliers to try to eat the cost of that, not pass it on to consumers. It's much tougher at 25%. I'm telling you, it could get worse than that. Not only could it be 25%, Trump might actually have to threaten 50% of everything. And I'm I'm telling you this from experience. You have to understand the Chinese culture. You, have to, you ever hear the one grain of sand thing, everybody going out? I'm telling you, it's the culture. They want to be number one. And for the United States, there's so much more here at stake because you have North Korea over there with China. This is this is so much bigger than just the tariffs. And everyone's saying So bottom line, and, you're not after this is this is settled any time oh, soon no. and you think there's more pain to come in there's, the interim. Yes, but I want to talk about the market really quickly. Real the quick. market is going to the market's going to rebound after this quickly, but when it gets really bad, which I don't think we're at that point, right. then the market's going to have a sell-off. All right, but Michael, the president's doing the right thing by, by, by getting in China's face on this, but it's just going to take a while. Well, well, deal. Um, over the last, so the Department of Defense, the Trade Representative's Office, have estimated that China steals, on average, two to three hundred billion dollars of intellectual property a year from the U.S. That's two to three trillion over the last right. decade. And this business model of stealing IP to avoid paying into R and D for Chinese companies has to. Well, end. you got to get them to stick to that. Yeah, right. well, that, well, I, I, right. I guess that was the sticking point in this. That's trade why you got to give them something. You got to give them something they want. That's a compromise. Why That's are you an amount. <laughs> I agree with you, all right? All right, we're going to have a lot more on this same subject. By the way, it's not just China. We've got sort of like global hotspots heating up pretty much everywhere. No more so than when it comes to the Iranians or the North Koreans, now even Venezuela. It's a scary world. Bit by bit, we're going to sort it out for you. Stay with us.